and the pitcher there he is second start since coming off the IL Marcus Stroman and brought to you by Budweiser this buds for you we look at the Stroman's repertoire sinker slider four seamer cutter and split two and five four point nine one ERA last time he pitched here uh, against St. Louis he got thumped he allowed nine runs and uh, ended up on the IL after that game you know the five starts prior to that one though he had a buck 80 ERA he is really starting to round into form uh, before that start. One of the things that's been interesting with him this year he still throws the sinker more than anything you think of him as a sinker slider guy but at the beginning of the season there were stretches where he threw his four seamer more and especially he threw it to left handers it's down to about 17 percent but give you an idea with the Mets in 2021 JD he threw it two and a half percent of the time so it is something that the Cubs introduced to him to do to throw that four seamer and it seems as though he's gotten away a little bit from what he does in terms of getting ground balls because he has not been getting ground balls really up until that last start. Yeah, his ground ball rate is about league average for the season and since he's been a big leaguer he's been among the highest ground ball pitchers in the game. So we'll see if he reverts back to that more of a two seam approach sinker slider cutter uh, try to get some chase with the, the change up that will induce ground balls the four seam fastball up can be a swing and miss pitch uh, so he shouldn't just shelve it right but but just be a little more discerning perhaps as to when he uses that let's see who's out there behind him to help out Cubs defensively brought to you by your local Chevy dealers celebrate sport utility spring in a new Chevy in the pasture we find Ortega in center he is flanked by Hap and Suzuki around the horn it's Higgins getting the nod at third with uh, Patrick Wisdom DHing here in game one. Horner and Morell up the middle. Welcome back, Frank Schwindel and Wilson Contreras behind the plate. So it'll be Brandon Nimmo to lead it off against Marcus Stroman, the pride of Medford, New York, out there on Long Island. First round pick by the Blue Jays out of Duke. Here's Nimmo, and away we go. And the first pitch of the game is in for a strike. That baseball players come from all over. Brandon Nimmo is from Wyoming, one of only 16 players to ever play in the big leagues to be born in the Cowboy State. I'm just guessing. I don't know if it's the Cowboy State or not. Feels like it could be. They don't have, at least during his time, state sanctioned high school baseball. So, I mean, they, they came upon him. Scouts did. Playing American Legion ball. There's a good pitch for a strike, and it's one of two. And again, when you're in Wyoming, you're not going to get a ton of baseball under your belt. If he can uh, execute that pitch consistently, he's going to be in really good shape, especially if Ramon De Jesus is going to call it. Other thing with Brandon Nimmo is he is a free agent at the end of the year, and he has hired Scott Boris. Two balls, two strikes to count as Marcus Stroman looks in. Stroman back to work. And the righty fires. And a foul tip that Contreras can't quite hold on to. You look at the year he's having this year, JD, he's fixing to hit the market and make some money. Yeah, timing is a thing. His progression, right, when he first came to the big leagues, there was a lot of buzz about him, former first round pick. Kind of had some peaks and valleys, but obviously now he's kind of figured things out. He's rounded into a very good major league player. So he's starting to flash a little more power than we've seen from Brandon Nimmo in the past. Had a long home run here on Thursday. Slice just foul. Brennan Miller on the call. Yeah, that home run for Nimmo on Thursday, his ninth. And no doubt, a little extra. Pop for him in that game. He was three for four with the home run at a walk, so he was on base four times. The Mets shut out the Cubs Thursday night, eight to nothing. First time the Mets had shut the Cubs out at Wrigley since July 24th of 1998. Stroman fires. Wouldn't chase, so now it's filled up three and two with Guillaume waiting to hit next no score just get going game one of a doubleheader John Chomby Jim Deshaies at least Meneker.
If you're Marcus, you just want to rely on your movement here. Good two seamer moving down and away. Pulled it a little bit. Yeah, that's ball four. And Nimmo sprints down to first as he is known to do. Time down for our keys to the game. And they're brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. What'd you come up with? Uh, what do we have? Yeah, stay ground. And we talk about Marcus needing to get the ball on the ground. He did last time out. See if he can do it here today. Taiwan Walker goes for them. His split finger pitch has been a real difference maker. And uh, yeah, not finding, but minding Nimmo. Talked about his uh, skill set at the top of the batting order. He's been hot too. Four home runs, nine batted in over his last 11 ball games. They have pesky guys throughout their batting order. Not easy to start a game with guys like Nimmo and Guillaume who take pitches, foul off pitches, make you work. Stroman missing downstairs. It was an eight pitch at bat for Nimmo where he worked a walk, and now ball one to Guillaume's. First two numbers there 302, 377, well beyond league average. Big league batting average is 242 on bases 312. Strike to the outside corner now one and one. Yeah, my line drive hitter is not going to slug much. Get the ball out of the ballpark much at all. Just two this year. Hits it on the ground a lot, so you always think that the hit and run could be in play with this combination. Nemo pretty good speed at first. Ground ball pitcher on the mound. Real good bat control in the batter's box. Jack Swain, and now an appeal to third, and he went. Yeah, his walk rate is better than the league average. His strikeout rate is under. It speaks to the Mets, by the way, JD. They have the second lowest strikeout rate, third lowest whiff rate in the National League. So a lot of contact. The one, two. Check swing again. Play right down to first. Safe at first. Appeal to third. They say he went. So it's a strikeout. Brennan Miller brings him up. Guillaume is gone. And Miller not going with that possession arrow approach. Both times he rings up Guillaume, and I believe both times he was right. I mean, as much as you can be right on a check swing call, it's always kind of subjective. With no rule book definition of a check swing. Nimmo safely back home. Much to the delight of Marlon. It's funny with Nimmo and the finding Nemo jokes with Lidor up here. David Ross, especially in the second half last year with his young group of players. One of the things he would just sort of randomly shout in the dugout in the clubhouse is, keep swimming, Dory. Because <laughs> you just got to keep going, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. You mean, you drop seven games in a row, you get frustrated, you just have to come to the ballpark and try to turn the page, have a fresh perspective each day. Yeah. Nothing in two on Lindor, the four time All Stars, won a couple of gold gloves. He's having a very good defensive season at shortstop this year. Cubs will be wearing the City Connect uniforms for game two, by the way. Father and son are taking it all in. Nimmo at first, one out, no score, top of the first. Did you have like an A move, a B move, and a C move? I would say that I got off an A move, a B move, or a C move randomly. It wasn't like I'm going to give him my good one this time. It's just sometimes you just were better at it than other times. I love the honesty. Oh, two down. Just off the outside edge, one and two. 
on Lindor. Good try, good take. And now Strowman back to work. Popped foul. That'll get out of play. It stays one and two. That was the four seamer there, Boog. Just tried to beat him, tried to overpower him in the zone at 93. He had Lindor behind that pitch. Two strikes. Good time to be aggressive, press your advantage. Don't let a dangerous hitter back into a situation where he has leverage. Nimble the runner at first the shift is on. Morell on the left side of the infield. And a throw over there. How do you assess Francisco Lindor or at least how do you digest 28 years old with the Indians over the course of basically six years he had 285 with the Mets it's 236 like he hasn't been as good a player. No no but I don't know and still in his prime I suspect he's going to get back to where he was and Stroman putting that off for another plate appearance. I mean there, there's always the, the new guy in town factor right big name guy signs a long contract extension a lot of pressure playing in New York. And regardless of where you're playing when, you, when you're the new guy in town with high expectations sometimes people struggle. Yes. That may be part of his story. And be clear he's got 16 homers this season and an OPS over 750 so he's still yeah. been good and delivering value as a as a defender. Here's Alonzo now. No score. Mets with a man at first. Stroman facing the big power hitting first baseman. Strike on the outside corner. Seen him run that two seamer away to the lefties, and now he's able to make that glove side fastball work for him. A little bit off the outside corner, but Contreras setting up out there. They were able to convince Ramon De Jesus that it was better than it really was. On the ground, hard hit through the legs of Higgins at third and into left field. Nimmo sprinting over to third, and they're at the corners. So PJ Higgins at third, not able to make the play for PJ. Just his second start at third base. He made three at Triple A. Yeah, and unfortunately, the first chance of the day for him was the ball that was really well struck by Alonzo, but that's clearly an E5 right through the wickets on PJ. Very nice little soft two hopper, but uh, you know, the reputation for PJ is very good down there at third base. So th this is not a guy, quote unquote, out of position who can't handle it. It's a guy who hasn't played there a bunch at the big league level. 111.5 on the exit below. E5 and runners at the corners and a dangerous hitter at the plate in Jeff McNeil. Ball one to McNeil, who's hitting 310 with four home runs. One of a handful of guys who's been in the league a while now with a career batting average up over 300. He's one of those guys that teammates will say, hey, this dude can rake. Just a hitter. A lot of line drives. Stroma delivers. That's a strike to even the count. Well, as you were mentioning, highest batting average since McNeil debuted at 18. He debuted at the end of age of 26, and only Freeman, Brantley, and Turner ahead of him. He's supposedly a great golfer. That's right, I did hear he was a really good golfer. Got those good hands. I'll tell you what, Marcus Stroman's got really good movement on that fastball today. On the ground, right at Schwindel steps on the bag, and that ends the inning.
No runs, no hits, a walk and error. The Mets lead two. Here come the Cubs, up to hit. Drinking. David Ross has Ortega, Contreras, and Hat. The top three, so second and third of the order, all stars. Then Suzuki and Horner Schwindel back for the first time since the middle of June. Wisdom hits seventh. Higgins at third, and Morell will hit ninth. The starting pitcher for the Mets is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you, Taiwan Walker. The big righty goes for the Metropolitans here today. Four seamer splitter, slider, sinker, curve, cutter. He's got a lot of weapons, Boo. Will you say it for me He's again? A large human. There you go. Four seamer at 94. The splitter has been uh, the really key for him this year, especially against left handed hitters. There's a high percentage of first pitch strikes. One of the things that he's done really well, and it ties into that pitch you were emphasizing, the splitter tying in to getting lefties out. One outside. Last year, lefties hit 192. This year, it's just 221. And it's that split finger fastball that he's used to neutralize them. The 2 1. He misses away. Yeah, apparently, he changed the grip on it. He's getting more movement, more. Vertical movement on it, getting a lot of swings and misses, and it's a big ground ball pitch for him as well. 3 1. And that is too high, and it's ball four. Last time out for Taiwan Walker, seven shutout innings last Sunday against the Marlins. Three hits, no runs. He walked just one over seven. And now he walks first man that he faces, and here comes Wilson. Yeah, there are the numbers over his last six starts, all quality efforts. In a 185 ERA, 4-0 with a bunch of strikeouts, not many walks. Wilson Contreras after the game tomorrow will be heading off to Los Angeles. His third All-Star start. Swing and a miss, nothing in one. So that splitter to the righties as well. That was was the uh, OO offering there to Wilson, who he like many of these Cub hitters has been scuffling lately. Just three out of his last 35. And the batting average dipped down to 258 now. Back, it's just in the nick of time. Yeah. See now that's probably not his A move right there. Boo. Thank you, JD. Could be. We don't know. On one here, Contreras waits. On oh, two. The vibe you get watching Taiwan Walker pitch is a man that's just out there playing catch. Nice, nice and easy. He's 29 years old from Yucaipa, California. Southern California. round pick by the Mariners in 2010. The one thing I've said this to you before because I'm a weirdo I miss about the compensatory pick is that I can't do something like this little nugget. He was the 43rd overall pick. So those that space between the first and second round sandwich round. Yeah. And he was a compensatory pick awarded to the Mariners for the free agent loss of Adrian Beltre. Play good tag there at first by Dom Smith. Moved on to Arizona and then Toronto and now a Met. This is a, signed a three year, $23 million deal. Has a player option for next year. That moved a little bit better than the previous one. Yeah, and if I may say so editorially there is no shot he is accepting that player option for six million dollars and no he was brilliant in the first half last year bad in the second half but with what he's put up I mean if he hits the open market right now he will easily make more than that. Quick throw again. Yeah it was a bit of a Cinderella story for him last year he was an all-star. 
at a 266 ERA in the first half among the league leaders and then the slipper fell off or whatever analogy you want to use had a 713 ERA in the second half allowed 20 home runs in 64 innings that ERA was the highest in the league among pitchers who pitched at least 60 innings. The one two that missed. Out the Cubs in their hitters meetings before this series when they talked about Walker they talked about that split finger pitch keenly aware of how much he likes to throw it. Two two swing and a miss and Contreras is gone. So you may be aware of it <laughs> doesn't mean you're going to hit it. Great camera. Look at the drop on that pitch. Throws it about 25% of the time. And you can imagine a pitching coach getting with him and say, hey man, throw it even more. Well also it's got to be hard to hit with that yellow tail. It's got to be distracting. Yeah, closely, I would think right? it'd be a little probably lodge the plane if I were a hitter. That's what I'm saying. One one to Ian Hap. Hap. Like Contreras, an all star. He's been through a lot ups and downs. And he spent most of the year at AAA in 19. Last year at this time, he was hitting under 200. He's been about as consistent as it gets this season. The defense has improved. I know Ortega is capable of stealing a bag, but he's getting the Ricky Henderson treatment here. He is. How many times has Walker gone over? Ethan Cooperson telling me four times he's gone over. One of those was the C move. Yeah. Softly, Guillaume flips the second for one, and that's all they get. So, a fielder's choice, and Hap replaces Ortega two away. It'll bring up Seiya Suzuki. Somewhere out there watching this ball game today is somebody that knew me from my younger days going, You've got a lot of nerve talking about a guy thrown to first base. Because you did it a lot. I did a lot. You were that guy. I led the league one year. Did you? Yeah, it may, may have been a record, I don't know, but 300 and some odd mm -hmm. throw over. Dude. Stubborn. Do you wish do you wish you could have it back? Yes. You wish you could change? Yes. Okay. Because I gotta tell you something. If I could go back and broadcast those games, I would have buried them. Oh, big time. I would have buried me too. First one in for a strike. To Seiya Suzuki. Suzuki showed you 10 games back from the IL, that left ring finger that he injured May 26th in Cincinnati. Got an OPS of over 900. Flares that one foul. Hey, let's uh, check in with the Mets here defensively. It's brought to you by Ford, who's where this afternoon for Buck Walters Group. Nimmo is in center. McNeil left. Jankowski. Plays right today. Escobar, Lindor, Guillaume, and Dominic Smith. Third to first. Patrick Mazeka behind the plate. Walker ahead, 0 2. Suzuki waits. I see. But what's happening right there? If you were, I mean, give me your best guess because we don't know. Nothing meaningful. Right? No, but what what's he doing that for? I don't know. I, I don't know if the dugout called for a throw over and he doesn't really want to do it. That's his way of, of saying I don't really want to throw over right here. Live drive out into right field, but right at Jankowski who makes the grab. And that's the end. Maybe no he's runs. Trying to annoy us. Fair enough. Could be. Working. Eduardo Escobar now. Escobar fouls one back. It'll be Escobar, then Smith, then Jankowski. Eduardo 
Escobar has been with the Twins, the Diamondbacks, the Brewers, and now a Met signing a two year, $20 million deal plus an option. On the ground, Schwindel will take it himself. And Frank steps on the base, one out. And the batter now, Dominic Smith. Now the Cubs wear the City Connect uniforms on Fridays. Yeah. But they're allowed to wear them when they want. I assume so. Yeah. yeah. So I would say they get a W tonight. You beat Scherzer, you wear them again tomorrow. But first things first, how about a W right here? Stroman going for a little walk. He's on the IL on June 4th after a, a start. He got knocked around against the Cardinals. Four innings, nine runs, ten hits with a bad shoulder. And then last Saturday, July 9th, he came back against the Dodgers. I don't know about you, JD, but that start against the Dodgers, four innings, two hits, no runs, in terms of the way the results came about, felt closer to what I was anticipating from Marcus Stroman this year as any start. Went down and in, and now three and a one. As continues to flex his shoulder there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of who he is. Attack with that two seamer, get, get the ball on the ground. That's in for a strike, says Ramon De Jesus. Dominic Smith. There have been some borderline pitches that have gone the pitcher's way here in the earlier going. That clearly looked like it had a lot of the plate, and I believe it was high enough. Three-two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Third strikeout for Stroman. Another sinker, this one down below the knees. Kind of a half hearted swing from Smith. A little rumble towards the home plate umpire. Smith clearly frustrated, but that previous pitch was in the zone. He's having an off year. I feel like when you're struggling the way he is, everything goes against you. He looks uncomfortable, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. First one to Travis Jankowski. You know, sometimes guys are out there, they just have a lot of twitching going on and different mannerisms. It may just be that. But it's the kind of stuff that if you're the manager and the pitching coach and the trainer, you start talking to each other. How was, he, how was his warm up? Did he look good? Any complaints? Yeah, he was fine, man. He was good. Keep an eye on him. Talk to him at the end of the inning. The command of the fastball has been really good and keeping the ball out of the middle of the plate with that good movement is the key to success. Two two now. Yeah, with two outs, here comes. Contreras trying to hold it right there and get the strike call. De Jesus not buying. Jankowski. At 31 years old, played his college ball at Stony Brook. Number 
first round pick of the Padres. He swings and misses, and Stroman gets a one, two, three, including a pair of strikeouts. Midway in inning number two, and there's no score here at Rick. Bat Rouge. Thanks to Donnie for his service, and it was great to meet. Corner unloads on this one. The wind knocking it down, and Jankowski there to make the catch. I don't think Jankowski saw that ball initially. He was very late to react. Plenty of air under it. So picking on that first pitch, and there you see Jankowski, a little stutter step and adjustment to haul it in. He's a good outfielder. Well, the guy today, Dan, he's Lieutenant Dan. Dan Williams. You don't think anybody has ever said Lieutenant Dan ice cream, do you? Pretty good chance. A little slow curveball that time, did Walker. So Frank the Tank getting a chance to hit right here. I tell you about the time we had Gary Sinise up here and I called him Captain Dan. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. And then he just gave me this blank look and he goes, it's Lieutenant Dan. Of course it is. Oh. I said, I thought you would have had a promotion by now. That's good. That's a save. That's that's all you could do. Can't rewind it. No, and 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 I am someone that I mean nine times out of ten. In part because I love you, and in part just because I I feel in those spots because I'd want to make you feel better. But I can say straightforwardly that is terrible. Captain Dan. I mean, oh. <laughs> love the movie too. Love the character. Yeah, clearly, the movie. clearly, just loved it. Loved it so much, Captain Dan. Say another one yes. before we return to regular programming. Uh-huh. Uh, I went to college with Siobhan Fallon, who played the bus driver in that movie. Remember okay. that in the movie, the bus pulls up. Absolutely. Yeah. She was a Lemoyne Dolphin. I mean, she she's had a very extensive she, acting she, career. She was uh, Kramer's girlfriend on Seinfeld there for a while. Yep. She's also the wife in Men in Black at the beginning, when the yeah, yeah, yeah. saucer lands and yeah. Anyway. Okay. We now return you. Deep breath. Everybody. Focus. One out, bases empty. The Mets shifting. Guillaume Lindor and Escobar on that left side, and Schwindel will take his base. So Frank able to coax the walk. Now's the time for a healthy start. So let's recharge and play. And do what we love with who we love. Together, let's live well. There's Patrick Wisdom now. Wisdom getting a chance with Schwindel at first. No score, bottom half of inning number two. Checks his swing, appeal to first. Didn't go, says Eric Backus, first base umpire. Let's take a look. Good call. Brown back. Well, with uh, Suzuki back now and Frank Schwindel recently being activated, Rossi feels like his lineup has significantly more depth to it, a little more dangerous. You see, you know, Frank obviously not having the year he had last year, but it's been a disjointed season for him so far. Hopefully he can stay healthy throughout the second half and put up some numbers. Wisdom here in the month of July, just 182. One homer last 44 at bats. Does have 17 overall, leads the team. The thing you really like is that the strikeout rate is going down, the walk rate going up. Strike to the outside corner. Zone. Maybe. Good for him. 
push the Schwindel back in. Like but Frank's guess, not going there. What's no, I know that is just, again. Who am I? But yeah, it's a it's some random throwovers that you wonder what he's thinking. Little bit high. I think Walker wanted that call. He goes for a walk. I think he may have mouthed wow. Yeah, that's a strike. Cutter catches the top of the zone, backed up a little bit too. It's weird the way uh, Malekhi Mazeki caught it. Kind of a weird stab at it. Schwindel at first. Here's a 3 2. Popped in the air. Shallow left. Lindor going out. Makes the grab. Two away. Today, Cub fans in Illinois can purchase 50 50 raffle tickets at cubs.com slash raffle through the end of the second game of our split double header or from a raffle ambassador through the eighth inning of both games. One lucky winner will receive the combined jackpot of both games. And the other half will benefit Cubs charity. So it's going to be a big one here today, folks. I encourage you to uh, pony up. Make sure you address all of them as Mr. or Mrs. Ambassador. 1 1 to PJ Higgins. First plate appearance. Made an error out in the field, but Mets couldn't cash it in. That's strike two, so Walker quickly ahead. Well, he's doing a lot of work. A lot of work at the top of the zone, isn't he? Yes. I think you've described it perfectly, though. It doesn't look like he's working very hard. It gives off a, a little bit of a Bartolo Colon vibe out there. Swing and a miss, and he carves up Higgins. Three pitches, and Walker pitches around the walk. End of two. And there's no he could deliver a message of perseverance. He embraced his gift and his hardship equally, believing that one would not have mattered without the other. I look at his plaque here in Cooperstown, and I think you will all agree, it just feels right as a perfect ending to his remarkable journey. So the Ron Santo documentary premiering tonight after Cubs post game live. Zika takes in the dirt. And the count one and two. Now we're not sure. We think David Ross may have been ejected between innings. Andy Green is taking over the managerial duties here this afternoon. And now time call. That'll be a back to back games for Rossi. Um, Tom Payne, the third base umpire on uh, Thursday. On. In inning number three. So now it's three and two. Zeka had a big uh, two run double in game one of the series on Thursday. Spent a ton of time with the big league club this year. So, yeah, we saw Rossi arguing with DeJesus uh, between innings. What we didn't see was DeJesus ejecting him before the argument ever took place. I mean, obviously, Rossi was giving him the business from the dugout. But it was after that ejection that Rossi came out and uh, got his money's worth. Yeah, he will return. For the night game. 
So popped in the air, Nico Horner tiptoeing out there near the line and makes the catch. Mazika retired. Rossi will do anything to get out of Fridays with Rossi. I tell you what. You think it's that or do you think he just wanted to go in the clubhouse and listen to us? Could have been that. Yeah. No. No, I mean, uh, De Jesus, and I, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly what the argument, obviously, that, that, that went down, but his strike zone's been really big here. Really big. For both, both, sides. both sides. Yeah, so the hitters are going to be really unhappy. And what's going to happen when some of these pitches off the corner start not to be called strikes, then the pitchers and the catchers are going to be aggrieved, and, and then they're going to be chirping as well. Yep. First one in Nimmo, and that's bounced towards first, but foul. Kirby down there. Oh, and one on Brandon Nimmo walked his first time up. Showed his numbers first time up where he ranks on base percentage wise. It's coming into the league and part of that equation is hit by pitch. Yes. He's hit by a lot of pitches led the league a couple years back. 22. He'll take his walks, hits for high average. His lifetime on base is 387. He debuted middle of June of 16. The names on the list, you set the minimum at his plate appearances. The names are ridiculous. Three eighty seven by the way is fourth in Mets history. Yeah here's what we're talking about. So minimum two thousand PAs since twenty sixteen it goes Trout Soto Votto Freeman Harper Goldschmidt Nimmo and if you want to know who's eighth it's Aaron Judge. He's going to make some money and, and he's really the outlier there because he's not a slugger. Yes. The two one bounced up the middle but right there is Horner behind Sydney. and Nimmo retired two away. Every out today, with the exception of one, has either been on the ground or via the strikeout. So one down, or two down, I should say, and it'll bring up Luis Guillorme. So David Ross ejected. The batter now, Giorme struck out swinging his first time. Mets and Cubs, first game of a doubleheader. Scherzer and Smiley coming up tonight. Having to deal with Scherzer obviously puts a little some extra import on this one, right? No this doubt. One in the bank before having to deal with Mad Max. A one one on the way. Stroman last year with the Mets. 33 starts, 179 innings. He had a 302 earned run average. His time as a Met was very successful. 44 starts, 321 the earned run. He opted out of the COVID shortened season in 20. But that right there, that gives you an idea why the Cubs signed him to that three year deal. Two outs. And the 3 1 is in for a strike. Yorme tosses the bat. And it ends up being strike two. Again, shooting for that outside corner, this time clearly on the plate. So there's this kind of residual built up frustration now for all the hitters. Anything borderline, they're gonna they're gonna be very frustrated, but that was a good pitch. Punched on the ground is short. Corner tackles it up, slings on the move and Marcus Stroman gets him in order again midway in inning number three nothing nothing at the helm the 1 0 broken bat out 
towards center. Nemo charging in. That one falling. And it falls for a hit. Morrell dunks one in, and the leadoff man is on base. Broken back player. Nemo really not in hot pursuit of that pop up. He must have judged early on that there was no way he was going to get there because never really made it a, a full throated effort at this one. And again, we talked about the wind playing in, pushing everything in for the hitters yeah, he, or against the hitters. Yeah, he just, he just, there's no way he was going to get there. So. Taking a more measured approach. Look, I don't know that we've seen it quite this strong this year. Have we? 28 30? If, if we have, it's better than move again. Um, it was real early in the year, I think, maybe. Right. I mean, hit it to right. Get in. Ortega walk his first time, runner goes, and that's punched foul down the left side. Morrell with seven stolen bases on the year. Or take the last 14 games at just 135. Hit a, a, a bit of a slump the last two weeks. Right Bob Davidson would have called a balk on him by now just because. I mean, there is value in making a guy dive back into the base. Obviously, there's value in making him aware of the fact that you'll come over. But I don't know that I've ever seen a pitcher yeah. do this with this kind of regularity. As Coop says, he's giving us his F move. <laughs> oh, there's so many good jokes that could be made right there, but. Side ball to strike now. Alan Walker. Tommy John surgery in 18. He basically had three lost years from 18 through 20. Arizona, Seattle, and Toronto. 67 in the third innings in three years. Here goes the runner. Foul back. And it's one and two. So I mean, start of last year was really a rebirth for him. It will be interesting to see what he does in the second half after the, the significant, significant drop off last season if he's able to maintain what he's done so far this year. Ground ball rate is way up. He's only allowed four home runs in 85 two thirds innings coming into this start. You see he wears number 99. Taiwan Walker we talked about it last year he and when he was out in Arizona he couldn't get the number that he wanted I'm pretty sure it was it was 44 he wanted Goldschmidt's number and so he took 99 figuring well nobody's going to want 99. And then he moved to Toronto. Oh, close. And Hunjin Ryu at 99. So he said, I'll take double zero. No one will ever take that again. And then he gets to the Mets and he found out Mr. Met wears double zero. So he went back to 99. Which was worn previously by Turk Wendell. That's right. And apparently, Turk sent him a little care package. 
licorice and a toothbrush and all the other stuff he used to chew on when he was pitching. Two and two, Morell at first, the pitch. On the ground, Guillaume backhand shovels to mid door. That's a pretty double play. Four six three, and there are two outs. Now Walker ultimately gets his ground ball, and they get their double play. Ortega fouling off a couple pitches in that sequence. Morrell not able to get the stolen base, kept the double play in order, and the Mets turn a pretty nifty 4 6 3. So, two down now. It'll bring up Wilson Contreras, who struck out his first time. Walker has struck out a couple. No score. We're in the bottom of the third. Game one of this double header. Walker coming in boasting an ERA of 2.63 15 starts. So 1 0. Now 2 and nothing. Well, this is what we talked about early with the wind blowing in. This would be a time where you feel like you could be aggressive 2 and 0. Thrown in there and see how far he can hit it. He gets into it, hope the wind knocks it down. The 2 1. Drilled in the air center field. Nimmo back, slowing down. And then takes a couple of steps in. The wind clearly knocking that one down. Contreras hit it 111.9 miles an hour. Lindor. Lindor, then Alonzo, then McNeil. The shift is on. It's Horner out into shallow right field. Foul tip, and that's a strike, and it's nothing in one. Early on, it looked like something physically might have been bothering Stroman, but it seemed does not appear it? to be the case. Maybe, no. you know, maybe just some tightness, and he was rolling his neck a lot. Second time through the order now for the part of the Mets batting order. See how well they compete against Stroman, who's really been on point. I mean, but Alonso hit his ball hard, the E5, and through Higgins' legs, that was 100 and something miles per hour. Other than that, and anything really all that well struck by the Met hitters here today. Stroman ready. Nobody on, nobody out. The 3 1. And that missed ball four. Lindor, the leadoff man, is on base. For all the true Cubs fans, your card has arrived. Get the exclusive Cubs debit card when you sign up for Cubs checking from a Wintrust Community Bank. Also, get a $300 bonus when you open your account. Show your pride with every purchase. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs today. So here's Alonzo as JD mentioned at a ground ball to third 111.5 miles an hour that Higgins wasn't able to field and went between his legs. But Stroman recorded the out got McNeil to end the first. This guy's one of the premier power hitters in the league. Nobody's hit more homers than Pete Alonzo. Since he came into the league, and how about fastest to 130 career homers? That's where he is right now. Only Ryan Howard. That's in the history of the game. Have gotten to 130 homers in fewer games. He's a beast. What he had uh, 53 his rookie season. Established the all-time record. Yep. To 
towards right center field. That's going to touch down for a hit. And Lindor is on the move. Ortega retrieving it. Lindor sprinting around third on his way to the plate. And he'll come in to score. And the Mets have a 1 0 lead. Doug Glanville was here in the booth with us on Thursday, and he's seen the Mets play a good bit this year. And this is one thing he commented on that Alonzo, a slugger, but a willingness to shoot the ball the other way. This is an 85 mile an hour slider right through the heart of the strike zone. And that's a really impressive swing of the bat by the polar bear. The lead off walk comes back to bite Stroman. I tell you, the other component, JD, is you watch Lindor who can fly, come around to score. The RBI double for Alonzo, but that approach, it shows up in the fact he's got a better than average strikeout rate this year. I mean, this guy, is, he is in there to hit it over the fence, and Alonzo does not strike out at an above average rate, more than the league average is the way you'd put it, but 20.7 percent of the time that's pretty good yeah, he's, not, he's, he's not an all-or-nothing guy by no. any stretch he leads the Mets with 28 opposite field hits it's kind of Goldschmidt like when you think about it yes Roman had 64 pitches. Plan today was roughly 75. Remember, this is just his second outing since coming off the IL through 60-ish in his start in LA. He threw 59. Let's be accurate. He is working on an extra day's rest. He's working on five days rest. Check six days rest right now because of the rain out yesterday. So six days rest for Stroman. Yeah, it is somewhat suboptimal to have back-to-back, -back, you know, doubleheader starters coming off the IL. And again, this will be Smiley's second start since he came off, so he'll be on a, a pitch limit as well. That's the beauty of the extra roster spot for a doubleheader. Carry a 27th man for the Cubs. It's Anderson Espinosa who's been called up to join the club. Bounced up the middle and Horner throws the first just in time to get McNeil for the first out. Almost got Alonzo wandering off a second and then it turned into a close play at first. One down. And Alonzo pointing over to the dugout as it said, I should be on third, shouldn't I? The ball hit behind me. I did not read it very well. For the best coverage in the game, let's check out the T Mobile coverage cams. Normally that ball in front of you you're going to retreat to second base ball behind you. But, but it's a tough read because we've seen a lot of guys get caught by the pitcher on balls like that comebackers up the middle. And they think they've got an easy path to third base and the pitcher snares it. I give you my two cents on that one. I think that if it, his first read is to go to third I think he's out. I think Horner's getting because it's hit because of where Horner was positioned. It's right. Yeah. At well, him. I think his, I think the issue was he probably felt like he should have had a bigger secondary. Right. And if you were further along and a more aggressive secondary lead, he might have been able to get there. Yep. Oh, one one down. A swing and a miss from Escobar. But but you're right. You know the many things that Pete Alonso does well, running fast is not one of them. So that's I can relate. Once in a while, get a good quick first step when we go back to the coffee machine. You know? Oh, two. I mean, as opposed stays to times when you make a cup of coffee and you forget it's there and it sits there for six innings. Been oh, known yes. to do that on occasion. I have done. I, I, you, 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 you shorted me on innings, too. I, I did have one game 
this year where we played nine and I made a, a nice fresh cup of coffee for our 121st pitch about 110 and then made my way packed up about to leave and oh that's right I had the cup of coffee played all night. You're focused man you're focused locked in. Alonzo out there at second. He knocked in Lindor with an RBI double and the Mets have a one nothing lead. Stroman. Marcus back to work. Outside corner Escobar is gone. Strikeout number five for Marcus Stroman here this afternoon. Wow. Backdoor cutter. If you see the ball fill up on that replay, it means it's caught a piece of the strike zone, and that right there means it's touched a piece of the zone. And what you're looking at by the way with that strike zone box is effectively the same technology they are using down in the minor leagues where they have the ABS system in place snap throw down to second and back in is Alonzo. <laughs> the old finger wag. Dumbo. This guys are Contreras and Alonzo. They might be on the same flight tomorrow to LA. Foul back. One and two. But imagine these guys, they probably charter their own planes these days. That, that was going to say, yeah. yeah. That's good luck. Yeah, it is. Good luck. Balls, two strikes. Here comes. Almost. And now three and two. Two outs. Alonzo at second. We're in the fourth. The Mets have pushed across the first run of the game. An RBI double by Pete Alonzo scoring Francisco Lindor. Dom Smith waits. Three, two. Punched up the middle. Backhanded Moreau. Throw the first. Nice play, Christopher. Mets get on the board midway in the fourth. It's one nothing. And Home run derby chain. That's on the line. Here's the 0-2 to half. That's upstairs. He'll be in LA. That'll be cool. He'll be out there watching Pete Alonso compete in the home run derby. All stars. Contreras took a shot at trying to pick uh, Alonzo off second base, and he said, "Don't try me." Hap gets a piece of that. Two and two on Ian. Out in L.A., not just the Derby and the All Star Game, but also the Futures Game, and then the draft is out there too. Ian 
can have a guy who was selected in the first round back in 15. He and Nico Horner both, at least to me, have interesting stories. I mean, it's not a complete outlier, but still, two two off the inside edge. There are two guys, JD, Ian Happ, Nico Horner, who were not drafted out of high school and then out of college were first round yeah, draft that's picks. Pretty rare. Just interesting. Mm -hmm. I asked Nico about it a little bit. He said, you know, out of high school, I just I had a pretty good idea what I was doing. I was going to college. Happ swings and misses, a little frustrated. Yeah, one up, one down for Taiwan Walker. Yeah, but even Saya. that, there are a lot of a lot of players that will fall in the draft because of signability issues. It's an assumption this kid's going to go to college, so we're not going to use him in a first round pick. But later on in the draft, well, let's take a flyer in case this kid changes his mind, or maybe we can convince him to come play professional baseball. And especially with that skill, if you have first round skill set, by the time you leave college, you would think somebody would have taken a shot in high school. Yes. That's lead one nothing Suzuki line to right his first time. On the ground towards the hole and short the door couldn't field it cleanly. I think that'll be a base hit. Yeah no doubt uh, infield hit here for Suzuki with his speed he's going to beat this out even if Lindor is able to get off a good strong throw here. Jump throw from the hole would have been nice to watch but it would not have gotten the job done I don't believe. Let's send it downstairs and release better. We continue to see Suzuki adjust to this game. You know, earlier in the dugout, I saw him talking to PJ Higgins about Walker's pitches and kind of like the grips on them from the body language that I could see was the conversation. So that's what's happening during the game. And then before the game, he's actually made some adjustments to his pregame routine. And this is something I found out when he was in Iowa and I was covering a couple of games there. And hitting coach Desi Wilson told me that. He doesn't hit off of the velo machine. So when you crank it up and you hit off the machine, it's coming in really fast to get you used to the high velo that you see in the games. Instead, he went back to a routine that he did in Japan, and that seen balls basically lofted in, floated in, because he likes to make sure that his body position stays back. He trusts his hands that on a fastball, he can get them around quick enough. So he trusts his hands and his eyes. It's his body position that he wants to make sure is in sync on the slow stuff. So when he gets in game and sees the fast stuff, his body is in the right position. Interesting. He's got what, to five multi-hit games since returning. A couple infield hits the other day against the Mets and another one here. And speed obviously helps out as well. A lot of tools, say I uh, does. Oh, two to Nico. Yeah, he stays alive. Yeah, Suzuki. It's interesting because nowadays it seems as though so many players have elected to limit the amount of batting practice they take on the field and they stay inside and hit off of the velocity machine that Elise mentioned. That Suzuki. Apparently stays away from. I mean, I don't think it's breaking news that batting practice as we know it is a wonderful thing for the fans and for the media. But over time, if you really drink it in, you wonder is it really something that helps? Short Lindor goes to Guillaume for a quick transfer, but they can't get Horner. And with two outs, a man at first after Nico hits into the fielder's choice. Yeah, I would imagine it would be specific to the player, right? There are probably some guys that say, Yeah, I like taking BP on the field. There's something about the visual component to it and just trying to move the ball around the diamond. You know, if you just go into the cage and try to see how far you can hit every pitch, that's probably not doing you a whole lot of good. Uh, and yeah, and I think the more meaningful work takes place down in the cages with the coaches off the tee work, the batting cage work. Yeah, it's, I mean, you think about it is practice that is. I'm talking about when the coaches do it. 
They're just not simulating what's happening in the game. Nico takes off for second, and he's in there. A stolen base for Nico Horner. That's number nine. He got a good jump, and Mazika couldn't throw him out. Now a man into scoring position. One guy that uh, Walker should have been throwing over there again and again on. Nico Horner, he was able to swipe the bag. He might be the anchor guy on the Cubs relay team. Morrell. Chop to the right side, and it gets through. Frank Schwindel, an RBI single, and it ties the game 1-1. Jason Hayward liking it. That's nice, right? You, you steal the base, you get in, into scoring position, then all you need is a little nudge, just a little chopper through the middle of the diamond. Gayorme with the belly flop there. He knows what's at stake. If he can keep that ball in the infield, Nico's not going to score, but just beyond his dive. Yeah, it's an area where the Cubs have really struggled. The Cubs into the day's play, 29th in hitting with men in score. At 220. Here's one other really quirky stat. I mean, this has nothing to do with Frank. But going into today, minimum 200 plate appearances. No batter in the big leagues had a higher percentage of his plate appearances with men in scoring position than Frank Schwindel. Number one. Drill, left field. That's well struck. Going back is the left fielder, McNeil, and he's got it. Well, that one at 101.6 and a launch angle at 26 degrees. Got to figure the wind knocked that down pretty significantly. Tied at one, Frank the Tank comes through. Travis Jankowski now top five one one Stroman back to work good bunner be aware of that one Jankowski and Higgins is way in at third base. Travis Jankowski looks like he could be related to. The Mets fine play by play man Gary Cohen next door. Gosh, I've just lost in the flow. Good Gary the flow. Young Gary had flow. I don't think I'm losing my mind for this one. Something facial. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, Stony Brook did. They went to the College World Series. Didn't they, they did. He was uh, when he was there. There's Gary. Gary and Ron Darling. Here they are. Working See, on this W P I X. Yeah, a little bit for sure. Give Gary the the, the salad. Swing and a miss. Stroman gets Jankowski. Yeah, we thought Stroman would probably be out of the game by now, but I think, you know, for the most part, it's been pretty stress free. He's got the bottom of the order due up here in the fifth, 8 9 1 anyway. Looks like he's around for just the eight part of it because Andy Green is making his way out to the mound. Brandon Hughes was up and loosening. Andy Green will take the baseball. David Ross ejected earlier today. So Stroman. With a nice effort here. And with one out, nobody on. It's a 1 1 game. Brandon Hughes coming in. Brandon Hughes into the ball game. With the left hander, 22 appearances, 23 innings, and a 3.91 ERA. The 1 0 from Hughes. Bazika takes up and in, two balls, no strikes. Three and nothing. 
So eight and a third, just three hits, the one run, nine strikeouts and three walks. The former minor league outfielder drafted out of Michigan State. Talking to David Ross pregame, and he's raving about Hughes out there shagging. And he can still swing it, too. Two. Bounce towards first. It eats up Schwindel, but there's Horner. Hughes gets there and they got him. Great job by Nico Horner being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, outstanding play by Horner and uh, Hughes as well, because there's a lot of pitchers that are going to give up on this play as soon as that ball gets by Schwindel, but Hughes saw. Nico out there in position to make a play and continued on his journey over there to cover first base. You see a lot of pitches break it down once that ball gets to the infield. That'll go 3 6 1. And there's a strike to Brandon Nimmo. Mets haven't been in the playoffs since 2016. That was the year they went to the National Wild Card game and lost to the Giants. What happened to the rest of those playoffs? History, my friend. Hmm? Yeah, the Mets made the World Series in 15 and then the Wild Card game in 16. They haven't been back since. And last year, 77 and 85, they fired Luis Rojas and Buck Showalter, the new manager. Well, it's kind of a reverse script for Buck, isn't it? Taking over this team that's ready to win, it seems like he's been let go, and then as soon as he's let go, his club, his former club, was the Yankees, the Diamondbacks, the Diamondbacks won the World Series the year he left. The uh, his time with the Yankees ended. He and uh, George Steinbrenner had a dispute. And parted ways. Like they were on the rise when, when Buck, Buck was managing. And he started managing minor league ball. He was 28 years old managing uh, only on time in New York Penn League was his first assignment. He was a Yankee minor leaguer. Played his college ball at Mississippi State. He has a certain reputation. I can tell you firsthand, having worked with him a little bit at ESPN, he is way more playful and fun than he gives off. And Nimmo gone on strikes. He started his sprint to first that he usually does after a walk, and now he's turning around and talking to Ramon De Jesus. And that was down. Nibbo gone. It's game. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Cameron and Ferris. Uh, they could join us. Are they actually in the seats? Roughly the seats. Throw it down that left field. He left oh. out slowly. PJ Higgins rips one out of the left center field. And so a double, a good start to the bottom of the fifth. And PJ with the extra base hit. What do you have to say about that, JD? Yeah, a chance to take a lead here because that was a two base hit. And as we know, doubles are brought to you by Elgin Hyundai. Over the 20 years, 200,000 mile warranty on every new car, only at Elgin Hyundai, a member of the Bob Crocio Auto Group. Strikeout victim first time, PJ gets his revenge here. Second Higgins had gotten pretty far off the base. Yeah, that's the danger that the bunt through when you show bunt 
and don't make contact. And that guy's thinking, I got to get to third base if he gets this down. It becomes pretty much an automatic play for the catcher to take a shot behind that base runner. It seemed like Mazika was talking today, Jesus, about Morel maybe being in the way. Or was he talking to him about whether that was a ball or a strike? Could be either. That one gets into center. Higgins will get up, and then he thought twice about it and stays put. Kind of a little bit not in a real athletic stance there, taking his lead very upright. And here's that fun play. Yeah, I think it was more the pitch. Morrell had clearly gotten out of the way there. Oh, I think they're asking did he put on the ground is short. Lindor in the backhand. And Morrell is out. And Higgins stays put. Yeah, I think you're right. I think upon further review. The question, you sure he didn't bunt at it. So people on both sides not real happy with Ramon de Jesus. I thought he pulled it back in time. Yeah, he did. Yes. Ball one to Ortega, who's walked and grounded into a double play. Up some Mets tied at one. Base runners every inning. Walker. Day making start number 16. We're getting a lot of stuff up and not utilizing that splitter as much, it seems, as this game has moved along as he was showing early in the game and generating as many swings and misses as he has in the recent starts. The other thing that's not a surprise is that it's been the right handers that have gotten the hits off them, all four. It's in for a strike. And that's maybe why we're not seeing as many splitters because there's not many left handed bats in the lineup. Which count climbing about to throw number 75. We're taking with a big hack at it. Now it's filled up. Still to come, game two of our doubleheader. That's tonight. 7.05, the first pitch for Max Scherzer and Drew Smiley. Three and two, the count remains. Cubs offensively JD one of the storylines this year that we've alluded to just too many ground balls this cup team coming in 11th in the National League in runs per game they lead the majors highest ground ball rate in the bigs three two on the ground foul it's just it's hard to be a good offense when you're hitting the ball on the ground. Yeah, if you're hitting it on the ground, you're not slugging, right? That's the trade off. You're not hitting the ball out of the ballpark as often. We talked the other day, too, about the high percentage of their home runs that have been solo home runs. It's on the ground. You're not scoring anybody from first base on a double, you know? Yep. Unless you pull right down the line. And with defensive positioning, hitting it on the ground is even more precarious in 2022 than it was 20 years ago because you're more likely to be out. Yeah, we used to value that guy. The ground ball up the middle guy was a really good big league hitter, but he's not anymore because no. usually somebody's standing, standing there. there. Yeah. <laughs> now Walker unloading the arsenal. Let's see what he goes with here. Three and two man at second, one out. Pick off play on. I feel Rose like the, the Mets had a, had a team meeting recently where they said we got to do a better job holding base runners. Oh my gosh. And a 
swing and a miss. And Ortega is gone. Walker able to get him. Is that the splitter? I thought it was a slider. Okay. It was a slider. Rafi now over his last 18. Taiwan Walker's made 12 pickoff throws today. Pitching a good game and facing one of the Cubs' more dangerous hitters in Wilson Contreras. So the Wilson today 0 for 2. And now 3 for his last 37. Ball one, no strikes. Another pickoff play on. Seems like a lot of energy to be expending, mental and otherwise. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely value in making that base runner in this situation aware that you might come back there, try to shorten up his secondary lead. PJ is not a real fast runner, so you're thinking being line drive base hit to the outfield. If he doesn't have a big aggressive secondary, we, we might have a shot throwing him out at home. But I think they've already accomplished that with all the pickoff attempts already. I don't know that. He needs to keep doing it, especially with their positioning. The army is basically in his back pocket out there anyway. Contreras with a swing and a miss, make it two and one. Mention the Cubs, 29th in the bigs in hitting with men in scoring position, 27th in slug. The man in scoring position. This is on the ground to short. The door throws out Contreras, and the Cubs can't cash in the leadoff double. End of five, one one. With fortification to the left side of their bullpen with Stephen Brault being promoted from the uh, minor leagues today. So now they have three left handers out there for the longest time. The Norris was on the IL, it was just Brandon Hughes. And they like to have multiple left handed options when you face the Mets. They've got a lot of left handed bats. Cubs would have to pitch well to win here today with Walker going for the Mets in game one and Max Scherzer in game two and so far that has been the case Stroman did his bit. And Brandon Hughes. Right there for his second inning of work. The Orme foul tips that one into the glove of Contreras struck him out. This time he elevates. We can't get on top of that high heater. Guy who does not strike out all that often has punched out twice here today. That's third in the league in runs per game. Right side and Schwindel watched that drift out of play. Now one and one on Lindor. Scott Efros is up in the Cubs bullpen. No doubt with an eye towards Pete Alonzo who follows Lindor here. And now it's Rowan Wick.
Use the two on and a swing and a miss. So Lindor getting a chance to turn around and hit right handed here. And Hughes a 2 2. Swing and a miss struck him out. And Hughes with three straight strikeouts. Brandon made his debut. He's like he's striking everybody out. My goodness. Talk about making a first impression. And the smile that he had on his face the whole time was pretty, pretty awesome. He was going to stay and get Alonzo. Down and in. That's when you know that slider is pretty good, right? You're throwing it into the right handed hitter. And consistently able to get swings and misses. Yeah, that, that looked like Alonzo was just cheating on a fastball there. Hey, real quick, couple of happy birthdays. Robert Latta Sr., happy 84 to him. And also want to say happy birthday to McKenna Schmidt. She's 13. Happy, happy, y'all. Why did I say y'all? Oh, two. You say umbrella or umbrella? Umbrella. You say insurance? Insurance. The one, two. Man, I spent a lot of time in Texas, but I did not uh, pick up that inflection. I'm, I'm capable okay. of saying umbrella or insurance. But Thanksgiving. What about you? Say fixing. No, not generally. Okay. Stay away from fixing and wrecking, and just to hear the occasional Santa Claus down there. Too. <laughs> Two outs, nobody on. Jack Swin did he go? Yes, he did. How about Brandon Hughes? Strikes out the side in the sixth. We're fixing to go to the bottom of the sixth. It's 1-1. Hey, welcome back. It is the bottom of the sixth. Mets Cubs locked up here 1-1. One, one. one Walker continues on for the Mets, and he's dealing with Hap Suzuki and Horner here in the home sixth. A one for one. Hat lifts it left field, charging in McNeil. Time now for the Discover matchup, and we turn our attention to game two of this double dip tonight. And it'll be Max Scherzer going for the Mets. Made a couple starts since coming off the IL. When healthy, he's been Max Scherzer, 2.15 ERA, striking out a whole bunch of people and not walking many through Smiley. Likewise, Dealing with injuries this year, he too has made just 10 starts in a 4.43 turns run average. Strike one to Seiya Suzuki. Frustrated right there. Say it did not like that call. Hey, yeah, the Jesus, the home plate umpire, has been hunting strikes all afternoon long. It seems to me yeah, that's uh, it's mostly down in a way where he's been super generous, not so much on the ball up because we had Walker grousing at him earlier in the ball game on some of those top of the zone pitches. Two. I mean, consider the way the wind is blowing in here today, the strike zone that De Jesus has had. No surprise, we've got a 1 1 ball game. And two really good starting pitchers on the mound. Adam 
reaching. And a foul ball evens the count two and two with one out. And that's the Cubs tied at one, bottom of the six. Outside Ooh, corner, and Suzuki didn't like that call. Came late. Maybe he verbalized it, but the, the signal came late. Almost like an afterthought. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. See, I mean, he, he, almost like he reacted to the catcher pulling the ball into the strike zone. Looked like the same pitch. Ball one, no strikes. To Nico Horner reached on a fielder's choice, stole second, scored on the Schwindel RBI single. This one popped up, foul it back of the plate. That's going to get out of play. Nico Horner, last 23 coming in, hitting 386, and he's raised his raised his batting average from 269. His current 306. Hit hard. Oh, on a bounce. No, caught out of the air by Escobar. And so a line out. Nico Horner retired. We're heading to the seventh. 1 1 game here at Wrigley. Everybody's spirits are good. Wait a minute now. Strike. Seemingly thought would be corners in McNeil waits one of them. Randy Hughes has come in. He's gotten all five guys that he's faced, including the last four by strikeout. And yeah, Rowick is up in the bullpen. Inside and now it's three and nothing. I find some mark three and one McNeil and Escobar and then Smith. Jeff McNeil will be going to the All Star game. For the second time in his career, he was there in 2019 when the game was in Cleveland. I believe uh, he felt like he was going to get a 3 1 heater there and ran across him up with a good slide ball. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the top of the seventh, 1 1 game. Hughes. Payoff pitch. And a foul ball. So, JD, you're 26 years old. You make your debut in the big leagues in 2018. The next year, you make the all star team. You go to Cleveland. You finally get a chance to hit. You come up to hit. And they put your name and Jacob DeGrom's picture on the scoreboard. Mm. That's not good. Nobody's got a good story to tell for the rest of his life. Line drive, and that's a base hit out into left field. So McNeil representing the go ahead run singles the other way. Now, how'd he hit for a high average in the big leagues? That. Yeah. Wade Boggs like here. So McNeil punches one the other way. Andy Green out of the dugout takes the baseball, and we've got a pitching change. Holmberg Cooper is from Naperville, heading to Indiana next year. It's kind of a COVID project for him over the past few years. Love Legos. 
Love Rowick. Rowick is in for the 38th time. Yeah, it's been a bumpy ride for Row so far this year. ERA now up over five. A couple scoreless appearances the last two times out. Obviously the the weaponry is there. That mid 90s heater, good sharp curveball, cutter, and a slider. 17 pitches in his outing against Baltimore on Wednesday. A hit, no runs, a couple of strikeouts. And depending on what the uh, Cubs do at the trade deadline, obviously take on a much more prominent role in the last couple of months of the season. Escobar up here with a count one and two. Escobar 0 for 2. 33 years old, native of Venezuela. An amazing story. Popular in every clubhouse he's been in. Grew up in Venezuela, but in extreme poverty. And and against all odds, making it to the big league situation. He's carved out a really good career. 2 2. And a swing and a miss. And that is out number one. Strikeouts are plenty here for the Cubs today. This is the slow curveball, and Escobar just can't stay back. It can be a good ground ball pitch for Rowan Wick. This time it's. Swing and miss. The 11th strikeout recorded by Cubs pitchers this afternoon. Man at first, one down. JD, one of the reasons I was a little cranky, we got rained out yesterday. Yeah, we did. I want to go see John Mulaney tonight. And now we got to work. And now we got to work. If only we could see him in person. I know. Maybe we'll get a chance to hear him sing. I'm hearing rumors. Chicago's hottest new nightclub is called John Mulaney Sings the Stretch, right? Wick missing at 96. Ball and a strike. 1 1 game. We're in the seventh. Nightcap of this doubleheader will feature Drew Smiley and Max Scherzer. Tom Smith up here. Smith, you can tell some of the swings and just the, the way he reacts right when he fouls one back. He is just in between. Struck out first time up. He had some words for Ramon De Jesus. This time he thought he had a pitch he should have been able to do something with. Pulled off it a little bit. Running average sitting right at 200 coming into play today. He has not yet hit a home run this year. Which is surprising. I mean, you're talking about a guy that, at least over the course of a couple of years, really showed power, showed play discipline, and it just hasn't come around so far this year. 132 at bats, and he's he's hitting 197. And a swing and a miss, and Wick able to get Smith two away. Stuff looks really crisp here this afternoon. This is a tight little cutter, just perfectly placed, running in on the hands. Under the barrel. More frustration for Smith. Travis Jankowski now. Jankowski 
0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts, both of them swinging. Higgins in on the grass at third. Bounce to first. Schwindel is there. And that's that. Good job. As the Mets get the leadoff single, don't do anything with it. John Mullaney coming at you. Excited to hear. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for his conductor. Bert, take me out to the ball game. Comedian, actor, and Chicago native, John Mullaney. Away, even some time to think about things and try some things. So I asked him, I had heard that he was thinking about trying the hockey puck bat knob. Love that we talked about Patrick Wisdom. He said that he actually messed a little bit with it and won at bat in a rehab assignment in Iowa. And here's the review he has. He's not 100% sold. He said he's definitely interested when guys like Wisdom and Goldschmidt have success with it. They must be doing something right. He said, though, it felt a little heavy, even though the weight is distributed differently and it's the same size that his bat he's using now it just felt heavier and he said the biggest problem he likes to choke up with two strikes and he said it was tough with the bigger knob so that would be the only thing he says that it maybe somehow that could you know, be tweaked or whatever they can do but he said you know what would make him switch it's tough when you've been using the same model four or five years now maybe if you know He's struggling. He switches over, but for now he's sticking with what he's used. Wisdom today not using the hockey puck knob, but yeah. you guys said, you know, you feel it out, see what works. Yeah, I mean that's at bat to at bat, right? I have talked to Patrick about you know, the, his version of the hockey puck knob. You know, they just made for him pretty quickly. Now you're talking about Goldschmidt and Arenado. They went down to Marucci in Louisiana. And they would swing with a certain type of bat, and they just kept sort of tweaking things. I think in the offseason, they both probably could get a better look at how they could be helped by that knob as Schwindel singles off of Lugo. And Frank with a good day, a walk, and a pair of singles. Don't change anything, Frank. Yeah, welcome back, Frank Schwindel. Three times on base here today. The soft ground ball last time, but this one. Well struck. Good approach with that fastball out away from him from Seth Lugo. With the leadoff man aboard here. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. You remember last time Wisdom was up there, he hit one hard and deep. The wind got a hold of it, took a big bite out of it. Oh boy. Packed it in for 31 feet. It would have gone in the basket. He would have put the biscuit in the basket. How about it? So we'll take a look at Seth Lugo, the right hander. Looking for the 34th time. Real good curveball and a 397 ERA. John Mullaney's rendition of the stretch was excellent. About as good as we've ever had up here. Yeah. He and the Cookie Monster. <laughs> Should have told it that. If you had, had stone-faced him with, you know you were really great, 
probably as good as we've had since Cookie Monster. He wouldn't yeah. have known what to right do. Right up there with Eddie Vedder. Yeah. Maybe not quite Cookie Monster. Wind has not settled down at all here this afternoon. It's been whipping. Foul tip into the mitt of Nazika. For that, how about a peek now from the beautiful Megalodon camera? And as always, it is powered by Nissan. Nissan makes cars a thrill experience. The thrill yourself today. Shop NissanUSA.com. So Lugo against Higgins now. J a double his last time up. Luca with that good curveball. Year in and year out, there's a lot of turnover in Major League bullpens, but Lugo has been a fixture now with the Mets for a number of years. Debuted with them back in 2016. Career ERA of 3.49. He's also one of those guys over stretches that started for them. He's one of the first guys. I can remember having a conversation where he said somebody told him, hey, your curveball's a really good pitch. You need to throw that more. And he, at times, has really leaned on it. Yeah, the, you know, the, in, in, in the olden times, back in the day, it was all, you've got to establish your fastball and you've got to pitch off your fastball. And I think more and more now, Coming to realize that that's not necessarily the case. Whatever your best pitch is, throw a whole bunch of them. Olden times. Back in the olden days. You haven't done gruff pitching coach in a while, have you? Break him out. Runner goes, pitches ball four. <laughs> Tap dances into second. Here, bottom seven, two aboard, and one out. Okay, Christopher Morell will come up to hit. Well, I've often said, Boog, win the seventh and you win the ball game. Cubs can come through here. Be nice to get a pair. Make life easier for the bullpen. Trying to snap this seven game losing streak. Last one called a strike, but not a strike. So, JD, let's go back to a conversation that we like to have fun with, but. I, I mean it in a serious way. We talk about, okay, technology shows you what the strike zone is, egregious versus not quite as egregious. But if he keeps missing balls that are out of the strike zone at a certain rate, that's a bad day. That's what I'm saying. That's a bad day. And, and then the even if they're the, they're right on the margin, the, right on the edge, the outlier pitch. Was the one that was on the corner that called the ball. Yeah. Right. So if you're calling all these pitches 
off the edges and you've established that and that's been what you've been calling all day and all of a sudden the one that's actually on the corner of the ball. Yes. That's the other one that people are going to freak out and I feel bad for him. He's, he's going to look at this video and he's going to realize he probably had a bad day back there. It's, it's a tough gig. He's, he's already ran Rossi. He's heard from Buck Showalter. He's heard from a number of hitters. Walker was getting after him earlier in the ball game. But that's the thing with the technology now that we have the ability to review that again in the olden days um, in the days of Eric Gregg and Frank Foley and some of those wide zone umpires from back in my era. This would be fairly common. This no would doubt. be just another day at the ballpark. Yeah. I'm with you. One oh, on the ground. The to Guillaume to Smith and they turn it and Lugo gets out of the inning. Six four three. We'll head to the eighth. It's 1 1. For Wick. Oh, he's got his Bruce Bolt batting gloves. Patrick Mazika does. Wick came in in the seventh with a man at first and nobody out and went strike out strike out ground out. The shift on against Mazika. James McCann on the IL right now with an oblique strike. Mets have had a good offense. This season, mentioned third in the league in runs per game. They have not gotten much production from the catching spot. No, they have not. Look but at those numbers. Yeah. That's why there's been some Wilson Contreras to the Mets rumors out there. 28th in OPS for the catcher spot. Mazika fouls it away in the count three and two. Speaking of trade rumors, uh, I saw one earlier today that uh, linked Noah Syndergaard and the Cardinals. Ah. Now he's just on a one year deal, right? I don't know. It sounds right. Stand by all effort. That one grounded. Porter is there, has trouble getting out of his glove, and then. Safe at first, it'll be a hit, an infield hit. Infield hit, outfield hit, it's a hit. But quite possibly, or was just about to be, could have been the second six to one put out for Mazeka here today. He would have had to do the walk of shame back to the dugout. Shallow right field this time, he was able to beat it. Another excellent effort by Horner. Yeah, how do you, I mean, you've got to write a paragraph to describe that play in your scorebook. You yeah, less than a square inch. Here comes Tommy Hadavi. JD Layout. Out. Whether it's lighting up Chicago or helping a neighbor in need, Powering Chicago's commitment to better construction, better careers, and better communities never quits. Powering Chicago, IBEW Local 134, Nika, Chicago. Tied at one, we're in the top of the eighth. Nobody out, man, at first. Scott Efros just got up in the cup bullpen. And Canna will run it first. So Canna runs for Mazika. Higgins away in at third. Canna dives back in.
drilled to center. Ortega slowing down. The wind knocking it down. He makes the catch. 105.8 with a launch angle of 26. I'm going to go ahead and say that was smoke. A very similar to the one he hit here the other day. The wind a big factor in this game today. Kept the ball in the ballpark for Patrick Wisdom and probably one here for Nimmo. It's, it's, a, it's a different vibe when you have the wind blowing in the way it is today. You've said it before and I, you pitched in the Astrodome during a stretch where the Astrodome really played gigantic. Did you really ever against certain hitters throw it over the plate and say hit it as far as you can hit it? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, you're more willing to challenge in certain counts, you know, certain hitters than you would be in a different environment, I guess. Yeah. I'd have to think for Ro Wick in that spot, even with the wind blowing in, with that quality of contact off the bat, it probably makes his heart jump a little bit. Yeah, well, you're, you're in the eighth inning of a tie game and a double quite possibly loses you the ball game. So even if the wind's going to keep the ball in the ballpark, you're still trying to pitch away from damage in, in this stage of the game. Good pitch. That's a strike. And that was, you know, that was the, the, the question I'm sure Buck Show, Showalter was dealing with. Do I bunt here with Nimmo? First, is he capable of getting a bunt down? I would assume so. Two, he's a really good hitter and he's been hitting for power, but with the wind blowing in, you know, small ball becomes a more likely option. Diorme pops that one up. Higgins chasing. Hard into that railing over there. Yeah, Higgins selling out in pursuit of this foul ball. He just runs out of time. That reminds me of playing street hockey and you get the butt end of the stick right there. Yep. Knock the wind out of you. And you hit the curb with the stick. We've all been there. On the ground, softly hit. Corner to second. Return to first. Safe at first. Long underhand toss there, and Morell almost able to make up the difference. That's a well above average arm for a second baseman that Christopher Morell possesses. Marvin Hudson was creeping in and from second base, the crew chief, to see if Andy Green wanted to review it. He did not. So two outs and a man at first. And a curveball misses for ball one to Lindor. Lindor a strikeout, a walk and a run scored, and a strikeout. Balls on the ground here today from Cubs pitching and a lot of strikeouts. I'm trying to think, has Suzuki or Half even touched the ball in the outfield here today? It's just a rhetorical question. We don't really have to answer it. Wick ready. Guillaume at first 1-1. One, one. Good stop by Wilson. Guillaume is not a base stealer. Let's 
Swindell holding him on there at first, and as soon as the pitch is delivered, Frank just basically pivots and faces home plate. He's guarding the line with Lindor up there, double down the line, could prove costly. So, so it's shuffling off like he normally would. He's, he's kind of spinning. That's in for a strike two and two. Playing no doubles, You're usually a little deeper, and you guard the lines, certainly on the pull side. Most teams have moved away from guarding the line on the opposite field side. Yep. So Giorme represents the go ahead run, but there are two outs. We're in the top of the eighth. Mets one, Cubs one. There goes the runner. Three two is downstairs. Ball four. And now two aboard, including a man in scoring position. The batter will be Pete Alonso. And I think Andy Green is going to get Row Wick and bring in Scott Efros. Side armor coming in to try and get the slugger. We're tied up here in the late stages. Any Dodgers? Former Dodger Corey Seeker's in it. Jose Ramirez is in it. Julio Rodriguez is in it. I'll go Schwarber. Juan Soto. I'll go Kyle Schwarber. I like it. I think Alonso is going to win it again. I'm going to have to have a little side action on that. But by the pitching change brings Scott Efros into the ballgame. He has been very reliable and very busy. After third in the league in appearances for 41, 42 now for the. Rookie right hander, 303 ERA. Two balls and a strike now, and Alonso's knocked in the Mets' lone run with an RBI double in the fourth. Reached on an error, a ball that he hit over 110 miles an hour through EJ Higgins' legs. Back in the first. Now Frost, 2 1. Get on the ground softly to the hole. Higgins picks it up. Throws him out. Efros does the job. We'll go bottom eight. 1 1. Right-hander Drew Smith in the ball game for the Mets. Hard-throwing right-hander pitching for the 35th time with the 3.05 ERA. Pretty heavy fastball slider combo. He'll flip up some curveballs and he does have a changeup. He will be mostly aware of that velocity and the slider. Snedo. Taking over behind the plate as we're taking a fouls one back. That's bullpen has been very good this year. Has have their starters. The closer is Edwin Diaz, who struck out better than 50% of the batters he has faced this year. Speaking of strikeout pitchers, did you see what uh, went down with the Josh Hader last night? I did. It. Wow. Holy cow. Giants had three home runs off of him in the ninth. To come from 5 2. 
with a six spot on him. Walk off grand slam by uh, Jastrzemski. It's yeah it to watch it is stunning to be honest. I actually I was listening to it I had the Giants radio call on as I was fading off to sleep. And I faded off to sleep long before it all went down and John Miller screaming grand slam woke me up. <laughs> Here's Wilson now one out. Smith delivers upstairs. This is the type of game that in a vacuum you'd say you know be on the lookout for one swing and somebody wins it with a home run. I think it's going to be hard today. Yeah I agree. Um, maybe to right. So one and two now. Contreras today 0 for three. Strike out, fly out, ground out. And a swing and a miss. Struck him out. And Drew Smith has gotten the first two that he's faced. Now Wilson uh, just not seeing this slider well at all. This was well off the plate. Kind of a feeble hack at it. Smith was good for him last year. 240 ERA, 41 and a third. And a good first half for the righty. Flips that one foul down the line. Nothing in one. Ian 0 for 3. Let's play the shift on the right side. Lindor, your man Smith. Line drive left field. McNeil is there to make the catch. And the Cubs go in order. We're headed to the ninth. It's 1-1. One, one. Here on the north side, they have combined one for 14 with men on base. So here's David Roberts in the closer. D Rob having an outstanding year with a 2.10 ERA. Good life on that high cutting fastball. Jeff McNeil a single his last time up. Pitch misses downstairs one and two. Higgins, Horner, and Schwindel on the right side. Morell up the middle, but on the left side of the infield. Tap the righty Adam Adovino up, so it appears he will be next. The one two on the ground, Horner in the outfield unloads quickly, and McNeil retired. One down, and a reminder at the conclusion 
of Cubs Post Game Live, The Remarkable Life of Ron Santo will premiere. It's presented by Budweiser. You'll hear um, Hall of Famer Ron Santo's friends, family, his former teammates. The documentary that explores Santo's life and career, The Remarkable Life of Ron Santo. At the end of the post game show, foul ball off the bat of Escobar and it's strike one. He's 0 for 3 today. Yeah, there's a lot of offers here today. Mm -hmm. That's with just three hits. The Cubs have managed only five. The crowd today, 39,219. Little specks of orange here and there. Some Mets fans in attendance. Including Mike Green, voice of the NBA. Tight curveball here from Robertson. 12 saves, he has failed to convert on five occasions, including twice on the recent road trip, one in Milwaukee. There are the mics. Swing and a miss. Escobar is gone, and there's two away. That's Mike and Mike in the afternoon. Yeah, they are. McCarthy and Green. General Manager of Marquee Sports Network, Mike Green, voice of the NBA and the New York Knicks. One of the funnier guys out there in our business. He loves baseball. And strike one to Dominic Smith. Smith so far today 0 for 3 with a pair of K's. He's been shaking his head more than he's been swinging. Yeah. Or at least as much. He is really frustrated with himself and with the home plate umpire. Twenty one strikeouts and eight hits in this game here today. They play the shift against Smith. For the Cubs scheduled to be Suzuki Horner and Schwindel near the bottom of the ninth. Edwin Diaz has joined Adam Adovino out in the Met bullpen. On the ground, Morrell gathers it in, fires a strike to first, and the Mets go one, two, three. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Let's see if the Cubs can walk it off. We're tied at one. Vino. And the veteran right handers done a very nice job for the Mets this year. He's a New York native. He's got a 267 ERA and he's got a really good slider. It's not all he has, but that's what most hitters think about when they think about Adovino. Just wanted to say a miss is outside. Adovino, 36 years old. He mentioned a Brooklyn native. He pitches college ball at Northeastern in Boston. It's in for a strike one and one. Cardinals, Rockies, Yankees, Red Sox, and now a Met. Pitch right there. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of slow and then crossfire delivery with that sweeping slider. So watch the front side of Suzuki kind of drift. And a one two. And he got him to swing and miss, struck him out. There's the sweeper from Adovino. Find a way to fight to keep that front side in. Compete against that slide ball.
Warner 0 for 3 lined out his last time takes a slider outside. Not many offers for Nico over the last month or so. It's in for a strike down one into one. True or false, out of Eno translated means out of wine. <laughs> the answer is false. <laughs> In Italian, in Italian, it's an instrument like a piccolo, I believe. What a 50 50 shot. Yeah. Well, that's like when I, I went to a Catholic school and they taught us Latin. I well, they my, did. My, yeah, I had to take Latin for three years and I asked my uncle if he knew any Latin. And Semper ubi sub ubi. Always wear underwear. One two. Out of Vino with that slider, but he I mean there's still velocity there, right? I mean yeah. the the sinker just got up there at 96. Two and two Horner waits. Down the right side slicing foul. Rally Claw. Adivino debuted with the Cardinals way back in 2010. Long run with the Rockies between 12 and 18. A couple of years with the Yankees. Last year he was a Red Sox. A no story he leased or bought like a store, an empty storefront in, in the Bronx or somewhere in the Bronx. In the Bronx, it's either in the Bronx or it might be in Harlem. That's where he, during the COVID, uh, that's where he trained. He still trains there now. He has the, yeah, he he goes and and trains in just a little warehouse. Oh. Oh, that hit him. Horner will take his base. And a winning run is on. And Horner reached on a fielder's choice and scored the Cubs' lone run back in the fourth after stealing second base. And I would imagine he'd be on the move at some point in this sequence with Swindell up there. Again, wind blowing in. It's going to be tough to hit the ball over the outfielder's heads. They'd love to get Horner into scoring position. I mean, you want him to try it here, right? Yeah, absolutely. Quality baby in the house. Rally Cheerios. 2 2 or 2 for 2, I should say, for Frank Schwindel. Delivery of Adovinos to home plate is pretty slow. We'll see if he speeds it up with a man on base. I have to assume so. If not, he's going to be easy pickings for Nico. With a stolen base in this one. It's how the Cubs got their run. In the fourth down, one nothing. Horner reached on a fielder's choice. And with two outs, he stole second. And then Schwindel singled him home to tie the game. It's where we are now. 1-1. One, one. Outside. Ball one, no strikes. Dell today is first action since June 17th. Right handed batter hitting just 157 against Ottavino. On the ground to third. Candid Escobar to second for one. The first two. And that ends the inning, and that will send us to the 10th. 1 1, we go to extra innings. 
So Dominic Smith will be at second. He's the Manfred man. Corners are in. Jankowski shortens the bunt, takes the ball. And Robertson into a second inning of work. Smith got hurt. Changing direction, scrambling back to second base. Looks like he tweaked the knee. Buckled on him there as he planted to try to change directions. Our ankle it looks like. And they rolled the ankle. He's trying to get a very aggressive secondary there in case the bunt gets down, but he knows he has to scramble back if, if it's not bunted. Yeah, he rolled it. He plants that weight on that. Front foot. Watch the right ankle. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, it turns under. It's one of those ones that it's, it's really Ow. scary when it happens. Yeah. And then sometimes it just kind of settles down and you're good to go. But if there's any doubt at all, I mean that's a huge run out there. They. I'm not sure he can go full speed and, and make an aggressive turn at third base. They, they've got to go to Plan B. And they're going to do it. So if you've ever asked the question, how do you pinch run for a ghost? <laughs> We're about to find out. And also, if you ever wanted to walk like a manager, just imitate Buck Joe Walker. No question. He has the most managerial walk ever. I mean, that could be Sparky Anderson, Jim Leland. J.D. Davis gets his hand on a on the double mitt. Normally in, in these situations the road team's not playing for a run. Yeah. But Jankowski's a really good bunner and not much of an RBI guy and they've got Edwin Diaz out there in the bullpen so as good as he has been Buck Showalter probably feels pretty comfortable playing for a run here. Jankowski bunts a foul and now one and one. Yeah that's right I would say. I would still. I'm surprised even when a team doesn't score in the top that you don't always see the bunt in play in the bottom. I, I just anecdotally I feel like the bunt in extra innings has been in play less than what was anticipated before they put this rule in. Oh my goodness. Where's that? On the day of a huge strike zone. Yeah. Hello? Low. Two balls and a strike. And Robertson missing again. Now three and one. Let's see how the Mets are playing this. Corner and Higgins. We got a scramble going on out there in the infield. Everybody's realigning. Keep the bunt on here. They don't. He walks them. And there's two aboard. Now Andy Green's going to have them uh, shift on the infield again. Kind of like a basketball coach who wants his hand the ball in the hands of his point guard. I think he wants Nico wherever he thinks the ball is most likely go going to go. And yep. Fun situation here again for uh, going to be Thomas Nito now who came in defensively. The bunter's priority is to make the third baseman come in and field this ball. Nito, by the way, has five sack bunts this year. 
which I'm guessing would put him among the league leaders. Tied for fourth in the majors. Chance to hit. Can a pinch ran for Mazika. The Nito came in, squares, pops a bun up, foul back to the screen. And yeah, that time Frank Schwindel charging very aggressively in from first base, a la Anthony Rizzo. And that Sir Andy Green, when he went out there, said, Hey, you know, if we can keep Nico home, if you can come hard and cut this ball off, we got a chance to nail that lead runner at third base. There are times in a game where you're just playing to get an out in a bunt situation, but here in the tenth inning, you're going to be very aggressive trying to nail that lead runner. Oh, one. Swing and a miss. After David Robertson, just the walks every once in a while are a thing, and he kind of admits it. You know, he just he doesn't want to give up hits. Head here, 2 Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Robbie, one away. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't leave the bun on in that sequence with Nito. That they let him send like swing the second time. Yeah. Yeah. So Nito followed by Nimmo. Nito. Nimmo. Today I'm Nomo out of retirement. Nomo to Nito. Fly ball Nimmo. One one game. We're in the top half of inning number ten. A swing and a miss. Cubs a run, five hits in an error. The Mets one three and zero. Oh. Nimmo zero for three. Uh, leadoff walk to start the ball game was stranded at third base in the first inning as Stroman was able to pitch around a two out error. Turned out to be a huge play in this game, stranding Nimmo at third base. One two Nimmo. A walk or ground out, a strikeout looking, and he's lined to center. Made a big game Thursday night. Three hits, including a homer. He also walked. It's a triple shy of the cycle Thursday. Yep. Ortega shading him a little bit towards left center. Ball he hit last time, he really got into. In there, got him looking. Nimmo can't believe it. This is the second time Nimmo has uh, filed a grievance with the Hazers here today. And this appeared to be a quality pitch. Certainly on the plate. Was it high enough? Yes, it was. Right through there. But that's what's happening, right? Part of it is he's missed a bunch of calls, and so they don't trust it. Yeah, all the borderline calls now, even if it strikes, they assume they're bad calls. In the air, shallow, left center, and half able to make the grab. Nelson Velasquez. So Velasquez runs. Here's Wisdom. Patrick Wisdom shortening to bunt. And yeah, normally you wouldn't think you'd ask uh, Patrick to bunt. But again, the way that wind is blowing in, when you see the numbers, the right handed hitters against Ottavino.
two career sack bunts at the major league level for wisdom including one this year. J.D. Davis stays in at first base for the Mets. And a spin and a bluff at second. There he is. Cubs and Mets tied 1-1. Misses now 2 and 0 oh, and Adovino is saying, "Where was that?" Yeah, that's a strike. Yeah, and I think maybe uh, Needle popping up, possibly make a throw to second base, influence that call a little bit, distracted De Jesus. Velasquez the winning run he's out there at second. He's the pinch runner for the ghost runner. And that slider finds a spot in the strike zone two on one. He throws the slider pretty much as, as often as he does his fastball so regardless of count you can't sit Peter. There goes the runner to third. Pitches inside, throw to third save. And now the winning run is 90 feet away. I got a lot of bold, unconventional to steal third base with nobody out. When you get into these late game situations with these relief pitches that are so tough to hit, why not be bold? Really good jump. Get that hand in there. Now infield in. And the count three and one. And here comes the crowd. The pitch. In for a strike. He went with the fastball and it found the spot yeah, 94. I think the fastball becomes the surprise pitch. Right. Crowd of, you know, you're so keyed in on that slider, especially the right-handed hitters. He threw him a slider on 2 all. Patrick probably hunching slider there 3 1. 3 2. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And yeah, there's one away. Really good execution by Adovino. 3 1 fastball, then the strike to ball slider on 3 2. And you see Patrick, he, he's trying to, to kind of think small there. Not a big leg kick. Trying to throw the barrel at that ball, trying to make a little contact, just came up empty. The thinking was good, the execution was just lacking a little bit. Well, PJ Higgins, a chance here. He's one out of two with a double and a walk. Infield in. And strike one. J. Higgins had that big hit in the late stages of the game in Milwaukee against Hayter. A one. Swing and a miss. One left handed bat on the bench, Alfonso Rivas. Two on Higgins. Velasquez, the winning run. He's at third. Outside corner, and he's down on strikes. And Adovino punches out the first two that he faces. Yeah, obviously, man on third base, you got to find a way to make contact. But easier said than done as Adovino has risen to the challenge here and executed some. Really good pitches, but frustrating to see the strikeouts with that man on third base. So now it's up to the kid, Christopher Morell. Slider for a strike.
Morrell today with a single, a ground out, and he's grounded into a double play. Coming into the action today in the majors, he had the highest OPS among big league rookies. Ground ball towards third. Diving Escobar picks up, throw to first. Out at first. Oh, brother. What a pick by J.D. Davis. It would have won the game. It comes where I want to challenge this just to make sure J.D. Davis had control of this ball at the end of the play. Spectacular play on both ends by the Mets. We always counsel run all the way through the bag. Yeah, he's got control. And did that cost him a little bit of time with that head first dive? Was it a difference maker? Hard to tell. We're headed to the 11. Yeah. 1 1. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. Let's go now. We're on the mound out for the 35th time, 306 ERA. There are his numbers. And got the middle of the uh, Mets batting order to deal with. 3 4 5 Lindor, Alonso, and McNeil. So heavy lifting for Michael Givens here. Not been too busy here lately. Alfonso Rivas. And for Schwindel at first base. Remember Velasquez ran for Frank in the bottom of the inning. Giorme, the Manfred man at second. And now it's Lindor. And that is ball one. The other thing on that play by J.D. Davis, J.D. He'd only played 23 innings at first base. So it could have you. Field for a base hit. Suzuki gets it in and they're at the corners. Have not been many balls hit hard today, but Lindor gets into this one and pretty quick stop sign from Joey Cora down there at third base. Yeah. Suzuki back on his heels to catch that ball a little bit. Nothing else. You thought maybe he would take him a little further down the line before he threw up the stop sign. But he got out there in a hurry. And Suzuki's got a big arm. Doubling up on the oven mitts. Yeah. Oh wow! Double oven. Red and a blue. Ball one, no strikes. Pete Alonso's knocked in the Mets only run of the game. 24 homers, including one here at Wrigley on Thursday. And he's an all-star for the second time. Two balls, no strikes to count. It's just so different for these relief pitchers in these extra inning games where like man on second base you come in you throw a couple pitches and all of a sudden you're in this god awful jam. Wow, that fans here making a racket. Only nine hits today combined between the two teams. Cubs have five of them. And that's with four. Suzuki is there, makes the catch, and here comes the throw to the plate, and it gets away. Down to second goes Lindor, run comes in, and the Mets have a 2-1 lead. So a sacrifice fly. About from the same depth where he fielded the Lindor base hit. 
Andy Green is going to challenge or, or appeal this. Maybe left early in third base. Trying to get somebody's attention out there, but obviously with the catch being the first out, you're going to be way more aggressive than you would be in a no out situation. So it's just a little bit offline. Zach Fly RBI E9 that allows Lindor to get to second. So now with one out, going to deal with Jeff McNeil. McNeil one for four. Strike. Jack McNeil, 12th round pick at a Long Beach State in 2013, played there with her old friend Matt Duffy. It seems to me Lindor should have been running from the get go on that play. You know the throw is coming through. It's going to go all the way to home plate. They're not going to cut it off. Yes. Strike two. Now the strike zone's been at issue today. Both teams have had some trouble with it. De Jesus, our plate umpire. The 2 That scooped foul. They twist off to the left. Might be able to beat him inside. He might be able to jam him. Very good at shooting the ball the other way. Two strike count. Hitters typically try to let the ball travel so they're not fooled by the off speed pitch. That makes them susceptible to the fastball in on the hands. And McNeil's quick because he chokes up a little bit. Next foul. A knob on that bat. Rose style bat, right? Model bat. I learned when I was a kid. I think it was a Nelly Fox model. <laughs> not that I'm not old. <laughs> old Nelly. <laughs> Lindor at second, one away. We're in the 11th, and the Mets. As Lindor takes off for third and a throw there, they got him. Contreras with a strike to third base, and Lindor is caught stealing. Big out. Let me talk about the bold steal of third base by Velasquez. How about Lindor with a left handed hitter in the box? Contreras has got a clean lane to throw. And he puts it right on the money. Ball and Lindor arrive at the same time. Good work by Higgins. Very good tag by PJ Higgins. Statisticians at home when the Manford man scores, the ghost runner, the zombie runner, whatever you want to call it, it's an unearned run.
Three two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And McNeil is gone. But the Mets pick up the go ahead run. We'll go to the bottom of the 11th. It's 2 1 New York. He has been one of the best relievers in the game this season. 19 saves in 22 opportunities for the hard throwing right hander. Average fastball velocity of 99 miles per hour and a devastating slider adds up to a strikeout rate of 51.4%. That's the big kid in Little League striking everybody out. Four times in history has a pitcher struck out more than 50% of the batters he has faced in a single season. So if Diaz were able to maintain that, he would join uh, Craig Kimbrell in 2012, Aroldis Chapman in 2014. And Devin Williams in the shortened 2020 season. So here we go. With a man at second, it's Morell. First one missing for ball one. Pass at that one. The slider didn't really do much, did it? No. Nine and just sat there right in the middle of the zone. That's in for a strike. One and two. If you're just joining us. David Ross ejected in the early stages of this one. Going out by the plate umpire Ramon De Jesus. So Andy Green's been the acting manager for most of the game. Swing and a miss. There's one away. For this season, I mean that 51.4% of the batters he faces, he strikes out. So that includes everything: walks, hit by pitch. 51.4% of the time, somebody comes to the plate, he strikes him out. Contreras had a good rip at that. Strike one. Wilson, 0 for four. And with that in mind, does Morrell try to steal third base here? Guy that's out there, so difficult to hit. Stolen to third twice this year as Morrell. But now Wilson hit an 0-2 hole. Just need a base hit to tie this one up. Contreras strikes out. Escobar was pointing to the dugout as if he wanted to review it. Yeah, they will not review that. Sliding to that back corner of the base, was able to get there and then maintain contact through the tag. So here's Hap Ian 0 for 4. Diaz. And that's bounced foul for strike one. Any ball in the dirt, you've got to gamble here if you're Christopher Morrell. Down and in. One and one on half. Let me rephrase that. Any ball in the dirt that gets away from the catcher the least little bit. Robert 
opportunities few and far between against this guy this year. Ground ball, that one up the middle. Lindor, and that'll end the game. The Mets hang on to win it in 11-2-1 as Diaz closes it out. Well, time now for our toast of the game. It's brought to you by Benny's Beverage Depot. Benny's the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. Uh, Pete Alonzo uh, drove in both the Mets runs here today, an RBI double early in the game, and then this sack fly that proved to be the game winner in the top half of the 11th. If you can't find it at Benny's, it's probably not worth drinking. So the Cubs drop another one-run game, and they have lost eight in a row. For Jim Deshays, Elise Meneker, and our entire crew, I'm John Chomby. Thanks so much for watching. Your final in 11 2 1 Mets over the Cubs. Coverage for game two of this split doubleheader begins at 6 30. It's Drew Smiley, Max Scherzer. They're your scheduled starters. Up next, Cubs post game live with Cole Wright.